I am Anil Kumar. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and sharing with me brilliant questions from around the world. Now this gives us an opportunity to learn what is going on globally on similar topics. So here is a test paper which has come from uh, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you once again. And we'll be taking up questions based on polynomials, factor theorem. Now, in this test paper, calculator is allowed, right? So, so it says uh, calculators are allowed. So we're going to use calculator to solve most of the questions. Here are six questions from this test paper. So you can have a good look at these uh, questions. They are all based on polynomials, factor theorem, right? We'll take their solution one by one. So this video might take about 20-25 uh, minutes to complete all these solutions. But I'll go in details of how to solve such a test paper. So let's begin with the very first question, question number one, which is f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 17x plus 10. Use factor theorem and division to factorize f of x completely. Now factor theorem really means that if x minus a, if x minus a is a factor of f of x, then f of a equals to 0, right? So that is the base for the factor theorem. So we need to actually find suitable values for x which can make this 0. Now those suitable values will be factors of 10 and factors of 10 and divided by 2, right? So possible values, let me write down here. So the possible values will be All factors of 10, that is to say, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 5, and plus minus 10. And also, factors of 10 divided by 2, right? So, so that means plus minus half, plus minus 2 by, so 2 by 2, if I do, I get 1. I can say 5 by 2, or 2.5 I could have written, right? So these are other possible factors which are which we need to try. Now the idea is that we have to substitute one by one a value here. So, so if I substitute one value, let us say one, then we have to see what do we get. Since we are allowed a calculator, I will substitute one using the calculator. So you should also see how to use calculator for solving such questions. So first is 2 within bracket. We are putting 1 for x. So I'll write 1 here and then whole cube minus 7 times within brackets 1 and then that is square minus 17 and within brackets 1 and then we'll put plus 10, right? And if I press equal to, I get minus 12. So when I substituted 1, I got minus 12. Let me try 2 now. So we'll substitute 2. So we'll go back. The idea is, you know, it is. it can be done very fast actually. Uh, so we have to replace this 1 with 2, right? And then see what does that equal to. Now if the sign changes from positive to negative, then we should try the value in between. This time we get minus 36. Okay, now let's try the next value, which is 5. So it's good to go in one particular direction, right? We might have positive or negative um, roots, but um, here the probability is same. So we are going in one direction. Now I'm trying 5. So I'm replacing x with 5. So the advantage is once you put in a formula like we did, uh, it is quite fast and now we get 0. Since f of 5 is 0, that really means that 
x minus 5 is a factor. Do you see that? And this is what factor theorem is. Perfect. So that is the first part. Now since this concept will be used over and over, it is good to go through it once. Now what do we do next? Once we know one of the factors is a cubic equation, we can divide by that factor. So we'll get quotient which will be quadratic. Quadratic can be factored easily, right? So now we are going to divide. So I'm going to do long division for now. And then we'll also see how to do synthetic division. So we'll divide by x minus 5, uh, the function, which is 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 17x plus 10. Now, that goes 2x squared times. So we get 2x cubed minus 10x squared, right? So when you take that, we get here 3x squared minus 17x. Now, we should multiply by 3x. So we get 3x squared minus 15x, right? And now, if you take this, we get minus 2x. And here we have plus 10. So I should do minus 2 times. That is minus 2x plus 10. And as expected, the remainder is 0, since x minus 5 is a factor. So what you get here is a quotient 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. This can be factored, correct? Now, once you factor that, you get your solution, right? That is how we should be doing it. So the second part to this is use factor theorem and then division we did to factorize f of x completely. So now, let us factorize 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now, 2 times 2 is 4, so minus 4, and we need to uh, get 3. So we could do positive 4 minus 1. So we'll split 3x and write this as plus 4x minus x minus 2, and that could be written as 2x is common here, so we get x plus 2, and minus is common, we get x plus 2. So now we can factorize this, we get x plus 2 as a common factor and 2x minus 1. So the quotient has also been factorized, right? So we are now looking into quotient. So that gives us the complete solution. We can now write the function f of x as product of these three factors. So earlier was x minus 5 and now we have x plus 2 times 2x minus 1, correct? So that is how we are going to solve such questions. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear, right? Let's take question number 2. g of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus 35x plus 75. Use factor theorem to show that x plus 3 is a factor of g of x. So that's the first part. And then Hence, show that g of x can be written in the form of g of x equals to x plus 3 times ax plus b whole square, where a and b are the constants to be found. So, first part, we are already given that x plus 3 could be a factor. We just need to verify. That basically means that if I substitute minus 3, so minus 3 makes this 0, right? So if I substitute minus 3 here, I should get 0. Only then x plus 3 is a factor. Clear? So let's substitute minus 3 here. So what do we get? Uh, we'll use calculator to, uh, to calculate this value. So let's write it down. Plus 75 is equal to what? So we have 4 times within bracket minus 3 whole cube minus 8 within brackets minus 3 whole square minus 35 within brackets minus 3 and then the last term is plus 75. So when you do equal to you do get 0 correct. So that means x plus 3 is a factor correct. So that shows that x plus 3 is a factor correct. So that implies that x plus 3 is a factor of g of x. I mean, 
clear. Now, second part is to show that the other factor is ax plus b whole square, where we need to find the value of ax plus b. So this time I'll perform synthetic division and uh, so that you understand both the methods and apply the method which you like. 4x cube, we only write the coefficients of these. All the coefficients should be written in order. So we have 4 minus 8 mi minus 35 and 75 will divide by minus 3. Okay. So what we do here is that we just bring the first term down. So, so when you bring 4 down, you get 4. Multiply 4 with minus 3 and place it here. So the idea is you just plus this, whatever, right? And then multiply and place the term there. So minus 3 times 4 is minus 12, right? And now again, you just add them. So when you add, you get what? You get minus 20. Then again, multiply this. Minus minus becomes plus 60. And when you take away, you get positive, definitely. So you have 5 take away. This is 25. And minus 3 times 25 is, as expected, minus 75. So what you get here is your remainder. So this is the remainder, which is 0. It has to be 0 because x plus 3 is a factor. Perfect. So we could have gone direct like this and also shown that it is a factor. But they said that use factor theorem. Therefore, this is important. Correct? It is for we need to use factor theorem. That is x plus 3 is a factor if g of minus 3 is 0. Perfect. Anyway, that gives you the other factor, right? So, you could write g of x now as one of the factors was x plus 3. The other one is here, which is a quadratic function. 4x cubed, uh, x squared, sorry, minus 20x. These are the coefficients, plus 25, correct? Now, that is a perfect square. You could write this as x plus 3 times this is 2x whole square, that is 5 square. So that could be written as 2x minus 5 whole square. So that is how you could write. You need to find what a and b is. And therefore, our answer is that a is equal to a is coefficient of x is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus 5. Is that clear, right? So that is how this question should be solved. Question number 3 f of x is equal to x cubed plus 6x squared plus px plus q. Given that f of 4 equals to 0 and f of minus 5 equals to 36, find values of p and q. So we need to do that and then factorize f of x completely. So there are two unknowns and two conditions are given to us. So that should not be difficult. So let's now substitute 4 for x. So what do we get here? We get 4 q plus 3 times 4 square plus 4p plus q, right? What is this equal to? It is given that f of 4 is 0, right? So that is very important to understand. So we can write this as 0 here equals to, let's calculate this. Okay. So we have 4 of q plus 6 times 4 square let's write within brackets okay which is equal to 160 so these two numbers give us 160 plus 4p plus q okay so that gives us one equation so we call this as our equation number one. Second condition is that f of minus 5 is equal to 36 let's substitute minus 5 here so minus 5q plus 6 times minus 5 square minus 5p plus q. So when you substitute minus 5, uh, so within brackets we'll write minus 5 whole q plus 6 times within bracket minus 5 square gives you 25. So we have this as 25 minus 5p plus q and we are given that f of minus 5 is 36. So this is 36 and that becomes our second equation. Now, given these two equations, we can always solve for P and Q. 
So if I do, let's say 1 minus 2, right? 1 minus 2. So if I do 1 minus 2, I get minus 36 here equals to 160 minus 25, which is 135. 4 minus minus becomes plus 9p, and that q cancels, right? So taking 135 to the left side, we get minus 36 minus 135 equals to 9p. So, so we have uh, minus, so let's do 36 plus 135, right? And then we can always put negative signs. So we have minus 171. Divide this by 9, it is divisible since the sum is, so 171 divided by 9 gives you 19. So we get P as minus 19, correct? So we find that the value of P is minus 19. Okay, so, so we found P equals to minus 19. Substituting in one of our equations, any one of them, we have 0 equals to 160 uh, plus 4 times minus 19 plus Q, right? So from here we can find what Q is. So Q should be equal to, let's do this, 160 minus 4 times 19. So that is 84. So we get uh, this as 0 equals to 84 plus Q. Okay. So, so that means minus 84 is the value of Q. So we have the value of both P and Q. Now, so the equation is for us, let's rewrite the equation, which is X Q plus 6x squared. Now p is minus 19x and q is minus 84. So that is f of x. This is the function f of x. Clear? We need to factorize this. Now we already know that f of 4 is 0, right? So since f of 4 is 0, let me do synthetic division here and, uh, and then we will uh, find the solution less space so I'm just squeezing it in so we have 1 6 minus 19 minus 84 we'll substitute 4 here divide by 4 since that is 0 so so what do we get okay so we get here we'll bring down 1 multiply by 4 add them up 10 multiply by 4 20 add them so it is uh, minus 21 right so so it is 21 positive since this is bigger. And when you multiply with this, you get 84. And of course, the remainder as expected is 0. So what we get here is coefficients of our quadratic function, right? So this is x squared plus 10x plus 21, correct? So they, these are the coefficients of your quadratic equation. So 21 is... Uh, 7 times 3, so we could write this as x plus 7 times x plus 3, correct? And therefore, we can now write the function f of x as product of all the three factors. Now, f of 4 was 0, right? So that means x minus 4 is the factor, and here we have x plus 7 and x plus 3. Does it make sense to you? So that is how we can actually factorize completely after finding both p and q so this is a brilliant question and i hope that it will make meaning for many students let's take up the next example which is question number four f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus x squared minus 13x plus 14 use factor theorem to show that x minus 2 is a factor of f of x solve f of x equals to zero giving answer to two decimal places Okay, so first part is very simple. Just substitute 2 in the equation, you should get 0. So we get 2 times 2q minus 2 square. You can use calculator to calculate this value, correct? Plus 14. So which is 2q is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. 2 square is 4 and 26 minus 26 plus 14. And now... 
So when you add the, these are the two negative terms, when you add you get 30, 16, 14 is also 30, so that is indeed 0. And therefore, we can show that this x minus 2 is a factor, right? Okay, so we got one of the factors. Now, it says solve giving answer to two decimal places. So we can now do synthetic division or long division. So let's do long division this time. Okay, so whichever is convenient to you, you can perform either one of those divisions. So we have here 2x cubed minus x squared minus 13x plus 14 and we know that x minus 2 is a factor. So we'll divide by x minus 2. So we get 2x squared. So that gives you 2x cubed minus 4x squared. Correct? Now when you take away, this becomes positive. So you get 3x squared here minus 13x. So plus 3x. So that gives you 3x squared minus 6x. Okay, so that gives you minus 7x, 6 and 7, and plus 14, and that is minus 7, correct? So minus 7 will give us 0 remainder. Okay, so we get 7x plus 14, and as expected, 0 remainder. So we have the quadratic function to find the other roots. We'll now uh, use quadratic formula. We have 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. We'll equate this to 0. Since we need two decimal places, let's use uh, 3x. Okay. Let's use quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus p, which is 3, plus minus b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times ac. Right? So we have 2 times minus 7. Correct? Divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. So let's calculate this value. So within square root, that becomes positive for us. So within square root, we have 9. And let me write plus 4 times 2 times 7. Okay. Which is equal to 8.06, right? So that's what we get. 9 plus this within square root, we get minus 3 plus minus 8.062 will take divided by 4, correct? So that means we will take either positive or negative. Both are possible answers. So when I take this positive value, take away minus 3 from here, and then divide by 4, we get one of our answers, which is, uh, which is 1.2, and to two decimal places, 2, 7. So that is first answer. The second one will be negative value, uh, which is, uh, we'll add these two. So 8.062, okay, uh, plus 3 equals to, divided by 4 equals 2. So the other answer is negative, which is 2.765. So I'll write 2.77, correct? So those become the other two answers, correct? So, you, so we need to solve this, giving answer to two decimal places. So our answer here is three answers for this cubic equation. One, of course, is x equals to 2. The other values are 1.27 and minus 2.77. Is that clear, right? So that is how it should be solved. I'd like you to, either way, check the calculations, right? But I hope the method is clear. Now, question number five here is, f of x is equal to x cubed plus kx minus 2. Given that x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, find the value of k, solve for f of x equals to 2. So, this is a factor. That means f of 2 should be equal to 0. So, when I substitute 2 here, we get 2q plus 2k minus 2, right? So, bringing... 0 equals 2. This is 8 minus 2 plus 2k. Okay, so 6. So minus 6 is equals to 2k or minus 6 divided by 2, which is minus 3 is equal to k. So therefore, the function for x is x cubed minus 3x minus 2, right? 
So first part is the value of k, which we found as minus 3. So let me highlight this. And then that becomes our function. Now we need to solve this equation. So since we know that x minus 2 is a factor, so we'll perform long division, and this time using x minus 2. Right? So let's do long division. Now in this particular case, you will notice that one of the terms is missing. So we use placeholder, right? So we'll use 0x squared. x squared term is missing, right? Minus 3x minus 2. And we'll divide this by x minus 2. So we get here x squared. So we get x cubed minus 2x squared. So when you take away, you get 2x squared minus 3x. So we write this plus 2x. So we get 2x squared minus 4x. And uh, that gives you x, right, minus 2. x minus 2 will go one time. So x minus 2 will be 0. So as expected, we do get uh, the quadratic equation x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we need to factor this, correct? So we know x squared plus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square. And this can be written as x plus 1 whole square. So we have this particular solution, correct? So we need to solve this equation for f of x equals to 0. So clearly, we have our answer. Our answer is x equals to 2, that is one factor. And here, we have double root at minus 1. So we have two solutions in this case. One is x equals to 2. The other one is x equals to minus 1. Clear? We are almost at the end. This is our last question, question number 6. Now it says f of x is x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x minus 15. Use factor theorem to show that x equals to minus 3 is a solution to f of x equals to 0. So that really means that I have to just substitute minus 3 and equate that to 0, right? So rather we should get 0 by this substitution. So let's do this and use calculator to calculate. Okay. So we have minus 3 within brackets and we have minus 3 whole cube plus 6 within brackets minus 3 whole square plus 4 within brackets minus 3 and then we have minus 15. So that is equal to 0, right? So, so that means that x equals to 3 is a factor, right? So this implies that x equals to minus 3 is a solution. Find the other solution, giving answers to two decimal places. That means, again, we need to divide. Okay, so let's divide. Let's use long division or synthetic division, as the case may be. So let's use uh, synthetic division this time. We have x minus 3 giving us 0. So we'll divide by minus 3. Coefficients are 1. Then we have 6, 4, and minus 15, okay? We have to get remainder 0, right? Otherwise, we've done a mistake. So bring down 1, multiply by minus 3, add, so we get 3 here, multiply, we get minus 9, add, we get minus 5, multiply, we get plus 15, and remainder is 0. When you add, right? So when you go like this, you have to add. So you get 0. So that basically means that the other factor is factor of this quadratic equation. So let me write down the quadratic equation as x squared plus 3x minus 5, right? So that becomes the other factor. Perfect. Now, we need to use the quadratic formula to find these roots. So quadratic formula is x equals to minus 3 plus minus square root of b square, which is 9, minus 4ac. This is negative. 4 times 5 is 20, right? And 2 times a is 2. So we get minus 3 plus minus square root of 29 over 2, right? So let's uh, figure this out. Okay, so we have minus 3. And to this, we do minus square root of 29. Uh, bracket close, which is equal to, we get some number, we'll divide this by 2 and write down first answer, 
which is minus 4.2 decimal places 4.19 correct the other will be we have minus 3 plus square root of 29 okay and that gives us 2.385 we'll divide this by 2 to write down our answer which is 1.19 so those are the two other solutions correct and therefore we have three answers and the solution will be x equals to as given to us minus 3 the other two are minus 4.19 and 1.19 is that clear to you so that is how you are going to solve this particular test paper so i hope you find these solutions useful i'll also provide you with links on uh, remainder theorem and factor theorem we have uh, many examples from previous test papers especially for ib students so i hope that will definitely help you feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'll be great keep sharing thank you